Trombone Shorty, yes. thank you very much for speaking to us today. Um, so you're four years old, and you have a house full of musical instruments, and the instrument that you decide to pick up is the trombone, which is difficult, to say the least. Yeah. What made you decide that that was going to be your instrument? Well, uh, I think that, uh, I had a house full of instruments, but at the same time, all my brothers and cousins played. So everything that was there, that was one of the ones they left behind that was actually broken. So I was able to make some noise on that one, and uh, I just fell in love with it. Plus, my brother, James Andrews, he's a trumpet player. And in New Orleans, we have a lot of trumpet players that have sidekick trombonists. So he made me his sidekick, and, and we just needed different people in the family to play different instruments. So they kind of stuck me with the trombone for a while. Tell me a little bit more about your brother. I know he has a huge influence on you. What, what did he teach you at that young age about music and about the business and about what it is you do today? Well, uh, basically, he just kept me by his side a long time. And as as time went by, I was able to gain experience and knowledge through being around him and seeing him uh, handle business, uh, performing on stage. And it was just a learning experience right on the job. And as I got older and uh, in my teenage years and able to understand, then he started to verbally uh, show me, uh, speak to me and tell me things that I may not have understood but now that I do you know sometimes when they're talking and you're really young it goes over your head then years later say oh okay I got it now so it's all paying off now Great, great. your band has extremely diverse musical influences mm -hmm. and so as as the band leader how do you bring that all together when you go on stage how do you bring that all together to create your sound well I think if we weren't from New Orleans it would be a very difficult process to make that happen but being from New Orleans we all get a chance to play in different settings musically for years or uh, even join some different bands uh, if it's funk rock if it's rock and roll if it's metal or whatever it may be we all spend a great amount of time in different genres of music and in New Orleans everything is like a musical gumbo so we don't really know what to call our music down there it's just New Orleans music because you can hear hip-hop you can hear funk you can hit country blues whatever it may be all in one thing but it all makes sense so i think it's a direct influence of being from the city of new orleans you know because we hear everything we're exposed to everything and we can go down on frenchman street and hear all types of music and, and it's just there's no boundaries there so if we wouldn't be from new orleans we wouldn't sound like this but we have to get a lot of credit to a lot of great musicians that made it possible for us to do what we do excellent Speaking of great musicians, um, you have a relationship with Lenny Kravitz. Can you tell me about how that relationship sort of evolved and developed and what that's meant to you in your career? Yeah, uh, I've been knowing Lenny for some years now. I joined his band when I was 18, uh, right out of high school, and we toured for a while, and we're still friends today. And uh, he, it's just uh, being in New Orleans, like I was telling you earlier with my brother, learning the New Orleans sound and, and being there. But then when I got the chance to go with Lenny Kravitz, it's on another level, playing arenas every night and, and, and big big thousands and thousands of people. So it was just a different uh, neighborhood for me. It's like when you move to a different neighborhood, a different city, you start to pick up their lingo or whatever they're saying and pick up their slangs or whatever it may be. And their, and their actions, but with me, with Lenny Kravitz, I just sat back and watched because I've been a big fan of his my whole life, and uh, I just wanted to figure out a way to try to make the funk rock thing work with the New Orleans sound, and what better person to, to be in a band with than Lenny Kravitz. So it's been a, a great friendship. We're still friends, and we're actually going to tour with him in a couple of weeks. He's uh he's played on both of my albums. I've, I've played on his newest album, uh, Black and White America. He's, he's my... Uh, He's my guy, you know, he's my, my idol, biggest influence, and, and I can't thank, thank him enough for what he's done for me. Awesome. Great. Your last album was basically put together during your breaks on your crazy tour schedule. How do you find that process? Do you find it a challenge to be recording and touring at the same time and trying to mix it all up? Yes, it's, it's, it actually worked out sometime. It depends on where you are mentally. Uh, it, working, going in the studio, sometimes you get into uh, different mindsets. You know, you, you, you let your hair grow. Or you're not really worried about anything, and and you get in there and you're trying to create. And then two, three days later, you're going back on tour. So you have to get back in character really fast. But it, it makes it kind of hard to uh, 
to be creative but at the same time when we put something down and we go back on tour for two weeks we get a chance to not listen to it and come back and see if we still feel the same about it and then we could be like oh no that's that's where we were two weeks ago I think we've gotten better just playing these shows so let's try to do it again and add a different section to it so it, it worked out really well it's good you know it's a good balance you know so we got a chance to revamp the music or come back and listen to it if it still feels the same then we just add some things to it and it's just a, a wonderful process but I think on the next record we'll, we'll, uh, we'll spend all the time in the studio with no shows and, and really work on it to a different level um, talking about your live shows, the energy that you guys have on stage and the, the, how tight your band is and all that, all that stuff. I, I just, um, I wonder, like, how do you, with your crazy tour schedule, how do you find the energy? How do you find the motivation to, to keep playing shows around the world night after night? Uh, I think the energy comes when the, when the band hits the first note. You know, we can, we can be dead tired around the world traveling. We can wherever we are, and once we get on the stage, uh, it it takes over, and we forget whatever happened. Was have if we're very tired or whatever it may be. Once we get on stage, everything ex don't exist but music, and the, and the energy comes from what, what the music brings out of us. But I tell you what, as soon as we know the last note is over, that's when our body starts to crash. We like oh, but it's it's just a beautiful thing, you know. It's a, we love to play music, no matter if it's in front of a in front of ourselves playing at sound check or in front of thousands of people we just love to play music and explore that that territory creatively so it's just really exciting and it takes over kind of like the holy ghost you know if you go to church and somebody's really preaching really well and and with music when it's feeling good it just takes over our spirit and, and energy and we just go to another level but we can't guarantee how much fun we'll be right after that <laughs> well trombone shorty thank you very much for spending some time with us and uh Good luck with the show tonight. Thank you for having me.